You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the gaming blah. Some of you know me on Twitter, the gaming dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir: Lucas's Path. So yo, yeah, without further ado, without further ado, let's just jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 16 minutes, my Tanya. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. What is Helena's relationship with her father? Is it bad, or is she just closer with her mother? It might be nothing, but I feel like I'm missing some of the pieces. I'm about to ask Lucas for his opinion, but to stop myself when I look over at him. He's sifting through papers, a look of focused determination clouding his face as he tries to find something that could tell us the way, tell us the way out. I shouldn't disturb him, especially with something as irrelevant to getting out of here as this. I already know he's close to his parents, so his opinion on this wouldn't be too hard to guess. Looking back through the rest of the report, there's nothing really significant. No stereotypical signs of a psychopath you'd see in movies, no suspicious injuries suggesting an abusive past. She really was just a normal girl. Healthy. No long-lasting conditions other than a small stint with asthma when she was younger. Turning the page over, something very, very different than I was expecting greets me. It's a page of a diary. Helena's diary. I am staring at it for a moment, flabbergasted at what I am holding, because why is this here? How is this here? I don't... I don't get it. I take an extra moment to scan the paper itself, just to make sure this is actually real, but there's no doubt about this. This really is a genuine page from her diary. Everything matches, from the handwriting to the general aesthetic of the paper. Lucas is staring at a piece of paper with such intensity that I feel bad about breaking... I feel bad about breaking his focus, but this is too important not to tell him. It's a page from Helena's diary! Look, everything's the same! He reels back as I shove the page up to his face, confusion in his eyes as they dart from the paper to me. I don't think he's as impressed with this as I am. I haven't read her diary that much. This just looks like an old journal entry to me. It's definitely hers, trust me. I do trust you. I never said I didn't. His face is serious and neutral, but there's a softness to his voice along with something else I can't place. It makes a smile spread across my mouth. Even in this terrifying scenario, there's still things that can cheer me up. He looks confused at my grin before giving up on whatever thought process he had. Instead, he chooses to look around at the room we're sitting in, from the shelves to the lingering on the door. Are you really going to read it right, right now? Do we really have time? Yeah, I want to know what happens in it. What if it's important? I couldn't hurt to, it couldn't hurt, I, I couldn't hurt to know. It might tell us what's going on here. It had to be for a reason, right? Don't breathe too slow. Who knows what freaks might hide in a place like this? If anyone else said that, I'd assume there'd been at least some amount of sarcasm about Lucas's unflinching tone and expression. Some amount of sarcasm, but Lucas's unflinching tone and expression tells me everything I need to know. He's dead serious. The page is well kept, considering the desolate place we found it in. Someone had to have placed it here earlier. Maybe it was right before, and we really were kidnapped. I'm about to read it, but something strange catches my eye. The start of the entry is completely riddled with rewrites, three lines of them. There's nothing of substance I can make out, but whatever she'd been trying to write, she clearly couldn't figure out how to start this entry. Hey, I tried to call you today, but you didn't pick up. I know, what, I know what's today, but I just want to make sure you're okay, so I'm talking to you in here instead. It's the best way It's the best way to keep my mind off of it. Is she talking about her mom? She sounds serious, but she's being so vague. I have no idea what's wrong, but it has something to do with her mother. Things are going on well here. We're only a couple weeks in, in but class is actually kind of fun. Mercy's doing, too, go, doing good too, and so is Quinn. I think Mercy's worried about you too. She te texted me a bit ago asking, asking how you were, but I don't know what to tell her. I'm worried too. There's more writing afterwards, but it looks like a different entry that was written later. There's numerous crossed-out beginnings just like the previous entry. She's really struggling with what to say. I called you again, but you're still not answering. I left you a voicemail. I hope you give me a call back later tonight. I hope you don't let him get to you. Next time I come up there, we're going to go to that new spa downtown. The one you always mentioned in your calls. I know what you're hinting at, Mom. You're not sly. Mercy will want to come, but I think, but I think we should do it with just us. A moment for us to just be a family with no problems and enjoy the moment. But that's for when I get home. Tonight, I think I'm just going to head to bed and call you tomorrow. Uh, to make sure you're alright. I know you will be. You're always so tough. That's it for the entry. It feels much more hollow than the previous ones I've read. There's none of the energetic optimism I didn't even realize I'd gotten used to. What happened with her mom to get her to worry this much? It doesn't sound like something new either from the way she worded it. Why did she have to be so vague? Wait, that's not fair. She's hurting, too. I think she's using the diary as a way to process her feelings on this. I just hope everything turned out okay, but if what happened is any indication, I have my doubts. You finished yet? You read slower than a middle schooler. Looking over to Lucas, he's laying his head on his hands. The papers are in a tidy pile next to him, neatly stacked compared to the jumbled mess we found them in. He managed to read all of them. He managed to read all of them already? 
And he even cleaned up afterwards. How long was I reading for? Yeah, sorry, I was just thinking. She wrote about something happening with her mom. She's worried and trying to get in contact with her, but she's too vague. I don't know what happened. I slide the paper over to Lucas and he picks it up, curiosity littering his face like he's confronting a problem. Not even 30 seconds later, he puts it back down again, but now he just looks puzzled. Did you finish it already? It wasn't long. I'm surprised it took you several minutes to read that. Do you have bad reading comprehension? My reading skills are fine. I'm just processing it as I read, you know, trying to understand it. I'm trying and failing to hide the growing blush on my face. I thought I managed to stop my slow reading from being a problem during high school, but Lucas noticed it so easily. It's like all that work was wasted. Something happened, but there's no way to tell what. Yeah, but something did happen. Maybe there's more in the diary. Aren't you curious to find out? Not really. It might have been nothing. Sometimes things are just hard. Can we get out of here now? I'm getting sick of this place. Did you find a map? No, it was just reports and other notices. Useless shit. Lucas's claws are out and beginning to dig into the table. This place is definitely getting to him. I shouldn't have read that diary entry until we left. Can we go? Unlike his previous plea to leave, this time there's a whine to his voice. It's subtle, but the guilt it makes me feel is immense. I can only nod and follow him out of, the, out of our chairs. There's a moment where I think he's going to storm out just to escape faster, but he walks back to my side, wrapping his arms around my own. It brings his body heat against my own, again. I can feel it traveling up to my face, but right now he needs me to, not, needs me to be not flustered. So I guide us out of the room and into that cramped hallway. I've only been walking for a couple minutes more, a couple more minutes, but I have to stop again. It's so hot in here. Has it gotten even hotter? If I was at home, I'd take my shirt off in here. Take my shirt off, but here in this unfamiliar place with Lucas, there's no way I could do that. He isn't looking much better. I could see sweat mashing down his fur, but he doesn't look anywhere near as phased as me. Instead, he looks confused at why we're stopping. What's wrong? I'm sorry. It's just so hot. Why is it? Why is it always so hot? Was it always this hot? Just take your shirt off if it's too hot. I don't care. What? No, I can't! Why not? I- I'm barely given enough time to get out a single word before a ca crackling s a crackling sound echoes behind us. It makes my spine crawl and I can feel Lucas's grip tightening. Turning around shows us the worst possible outcome. Down the hallway between all the cramped furniture is a rising inferno. The fire is growing at a rate faster than I've ever seen, but then again, I've never seen a real fire. We didn't even have a fireplace in our house. The closest to it was using Bunsen burners in high school chemistry. There's a beauty in the absolute horror of, the all, of an all-encompassing blaze. It's like staring into an opening to hell. The only thing stopping me from being mesmerized is the pain of claws digging into my arm. Lucas isn't just frozen. He doesn't look even. He doesn't even look responsive. He's just staring blankly at the fire with wide eyes. The only sign that he's still there is his iron grip still wrapped tight. Lucas, are you there? We need to go. And he just keeps staring at the fire. The fear in his dilated pupils is enough to tell me that he can't hear me. Lucas, come on! You've got to snap out of it. I don't want to be rough, but the flames are crawling towards us, and we don't have the time to mess around any further. I grab him and shake him, trying to keep it as tame as I can. Thankfully, that does the trick, and he turns to look at me, confusion and terror smeared across his face. He's still holding onto my arm tight, but I don't have the heart to tell him to let go. Wallace, I... We don't have time. Let's go! He probably needs some kind of comfort or reassurance, but there isn't time right now. We'll get to that once we're safe and out of here. Taking him along with me, we begin to race down the hallway. It's awkward to keep us linked, especially with all the furniture in the way. There's a turn coming up, and there's a sign indicating a stairwell in that direction. That must be where we need to go. There's no way that doesn't lead to some kind of exit. We manage to dodge our, wa dodge our way down the hallway, keeping a steady pace from the flames, but a chair is seemingly knocked over by itself, blocking the way right before our turn. If the circumstances were normal, I'd have been able to stop and just go around it or over it, but things are not normal, and I have, I have other factors involved that aren't me. Primarily a fox attached to my hip. I slow down, trying to stop, but I'm only able to for a moment until Lucas crashes into me, lurching us forward. The two of us hit the chair, tripping and falling over the other side in an awkward mess. It's like a comedy sketch, it's as if fate is playing a cruel joke on us. I'm about to curse my luck when I hear the briefest glimpse of a giggle in the distance. It was so minuscule that I'm not even sure it's real. Turning my head towards the sound in the direction of the new hallway, I managed to see the edge of something crawling into a vent. Is that a tail? Did someone knock this chair down on purpose? But who would do that and why? Wait, was it the person who kidnapped us? Did they set the place on fire and are trying to take us out? But why didn't they kill us while we were still while we were sleeping then? Lucas groans as he pulls himself to his knees. I know I have to push these thoughts of my, out of my mind. This is not the time. This is definitely not the time. Here, let me help. He doesn't complain or say anything. In fact, he just takes my hand and he just takes my hand and I hoist him to his feet. There's a moment when he has to lean on me to keep steady, but he finds his balance. 
The flames are just behind us now, beginning to lick at the chair we tripped over. It's moving so fast, it feels like a predator hunting us down. I shove Lucas towards the turn, and it doesn't take him long to hurry along with me. I expect him to take my arm again, but he doesn't. It must have slipped his mind during the chaos. Looking over towards him, his ears are down and the fear is still there, but there's also sadness. Something closer to grief. It's like he did something horrific, but I don't know what. I better not have given up already. We can not We can make it out of this. We can't afford to get separated or lost, so I reach down and grab his hand. I expect him to resist or prickle up, but he just looks towards me with a wide-eyed gaze before he grips it back. Even if it might not be the easiest to run with. It's a hell of a lot better than having him hang off my arm, and I will admit, having someone else to hold onto is reassuring when hell is at your doorstep. This hallway is lacking any of the obnoxious furniture that blocked the path, but it's even smaller than before. There's barely enough room for Lucas and myself to run side by side. It's either... It's either... If either of us were Oscar, I don't think we'd be able to do it, but without running the risk of smacking into door handles. There's a bunch of rooms, but none of them indicate a stairwell or exit, so they're useless to us. I can feel my legs burning and my breath running a bit ragged. I haven't exerted myself like this since middle school. This really is taking a toll on me. The heat doesn't help either. But then I hear Lucas's haggard panting, and I can see he's doing much worse than I am. He looks thinner, but right now... He looks thinner, but right now... He looks thinner, but right now... It's like his entire fur is dripping or matted down with sweat. I can see the edges of some areas are burnt. I don't think either of us are injured, but I think some embers might have made contact with some of our fur. What's that? He's barely able to get the words out, but it doesn't take me nearly as long to figure out what he's referring to. It's difficult to make out due to the smoke covering the roof, but if I didn't know the if I didn't know the fire was behind us, I'd have thought it originated from the door from the way the smoke looks to be pouring in. Something about this door isn't right, but the sign above it makes it clear this is the way to go, and Lucas isn't looking too hot as it is. The fox is beginning to cough between pants. Sweat is dripping off his nose and his and chin in large beads, some of them even dripping into his permanently gaping mouth. The rapidly decreasing oxygen and heat is bad for me, but it looks like it's suffocating him. I'm about to brace myself to slam into the door when a sound causes me to stop. It's difficult to make out through that raging inferno, but it could have but I could have sworn it sounded like giggling. High-pitched giggling. The sound causes my legs to seize and I abruptly halt, whirling around to catch whatever I heard, ignoring the surprised yelp from Lucas. It's hard to make out anything through the smoke other than the blackness and a tornado of red. Even the furniture is completely shrouded in the flames' beautiful deadly dance. But I know I can see it. Regardless of how much my vision is obscured and the heat is twisting my vision into a distorted mess, it's standing right there in the flames. A small figure. A, a child. There's something off about them. They're barely visible through the smoke and heat haze, but they look to be just standing still, staring at us. I can't see their features, only a barely visible silhouette, but I know their eyes are on us. I take a step towards the flame when something grabs my shirt. The grip tight and desperate. It's Lucas and he looks terrified. His eyes unfocused and nearly glazed over. Let's go, please. It, it's stuck. I can't... He's choking out the words and he can't even finish his sentence. He's shutting down out of fear. I need to get him out of here right now. Hey, come on. Look at me. You can do this. Just take a deep breath. He tries to take in a deep breath, but it breaks into a shaky mess. Trying to calm him down, I read out and put my hands on his shoulder, hoping the close proximity might be enough to ease his nerves. But it's the closeness or because he's able to get his breathing back to normal. He's able to take a deep breath and slow it to just a slight, just a light pant. He's still shaking, but he doesn't look like he's going to break down into tears. Better? Yeah, thanks. He reaches up to one of my hands on his shoulder and runs a finger along it. He's got a focused expression like he's trying to count each strand of fur as they're brushed aside. Finally, he nods and pulls away. I glance back towards the flames, but the figure is no longer there. It only makes the feeling of dread in my stomach worsen. Who or what was that? Bringing my focus back on Lucas and trying to escape this place. I try to open the closed door, but it barely opens a crack. For a moment, I think it's locked, but it's budged it, but it's budged enough to rule that out. That's what Lucas meant by it's stuck. It must be caught on something on the other side. Maybe someone was trying to barricade the fire in. Better than someone trying to lock us in here, I suppose. I shove hard, but I'm only able to shift it a little more, and it slides right back as soon as I let the pressure up. Trying one more time, I slam my shoulder against it, but that just leaves me with a still stuck door and a sore shoulder. I really wish we had Oscar right now. I hadn't really meant to say that, but it barely came out as a whisper, but as soon as it left my mouth, I regretted it. Lucas's ears pressed down against his head, and he looks away towards the door. Hey, don't mean it like that. He just really helped right now. I... I know, I know. It's fine. Let, let, let me help, too. Okay. This time we both slam against it. The doors give significantly more than before. I could even see through the door for a moment. It looks like there's something glowing through the crack, but I can't really think about that right now. On three. One, two, three. Our combined grunts echo throughout the hallway as we both smash into the door, completely losing our footing as it flies open. The two of us hit the floor with a loud thud. A triumphant feeling is burned to ash as soon as I'm able to comprehend what's through the door. If the hallway behind us was a blazing inferno, then this new corridor is hell itself. Everything's a deep red, 
All the walls and ceiling are covered in flames like a swarm of locusts. There's no furniture left in the room, only embers and crackling pieces of wood. Far into the hallway, I see something running around a corner. I'm able to make out little details besides a light-colored cloth fluttering behind their head. Lucas is still lying on the ground, gaping at the horror before us. He isn't making any attempt to get up. I don't know if he can. Come on, we gotta run through. We gotta we gotta run through. Get up! Lifting him off the ground, his thin weight his thin weight light enough for me to hoist him up. Thank God Lucas is so thin. I don't think I could do this with Lee or, God forbid, Oscar. We can't run through. We'll be burnt alive. We don't have a choice. We can't go back. There, there must be an exit down there somewhere. There's no way! Despite the confrontational tone and lack of stuttering, the fear in his eyes and his refusal to let go of my shirt tells me everything I need to know. He's absolutely terrified. You gotta trust me. He looks towards the fiery hole in front of us, and I can almost hear the cogs in his head, but he gives me a small nod. He lets go of my shirt, his hands and legs shaking to the point where he might fall any second. I'm not too far behind him, but I have to start strong for him. Hold my hand. I'll help you if things get bad, okay? He takes it without hesitation, his claws digging into my knuckles, but with all the adrenaline pumping through my veins, I don't feel anything but the pulsing of blood in my head. I wish I was anywhere near as confident as I sound, but I can't just stand here and let the two of us burn to a crisp. Lucas needs my help, and I have to act. The two of us rush through the door, rush through the corridor, sprinting at full speed since there's no need to worry about colliding with anything, with something. Everything's been burnt to ashes by this point. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.